Hello and welcome to the Tried and Refused Productions YouTube channel. I'm extremely honored to have my favorite creators right now in the Hindi space, Raj and DK. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Um, so I wanted to first start off with uh, something that I've been really curious about, especially of the success that you've had in the digital space. And first of all, also congratulations for Guns and Gulab. And I wanted to ask you, is the luxury that you're uh, experiencing as creators in the digital space a combination of both long form content and uh, the creative themes you can push versus what you had with full feature films? I mean, the long format or just the medium, it's not about the long mm -hmm. format so much as just the medium itself uh, the, coming on a platform like this that allows us a certain leeway, a certain freedom that possibly would have been there in films, as in you don't have to worry about opening on that Friday mm. kind of a thing. You could tell a story and if it takes a while to pick up in the audience by the time they realize it's a good film, it still works. Mm -hmm. As opposed to a film, a lot of times you hear about a film that didn't do well in theaters and people discovered it later. So that's definitely one advantage. Are and you the, pushing the envelope as well with the themes that you're focusing on? Not See, not necessarily. I, mm -hmm. I, I like to think this is the, this is the, we would have been telling the same stories if we were making it for the uh, for, uh, for the cinemas as well. But but the way we would have been doing this would have been different. Perhaps we wouldn't be, for example, casting people from all over the country speaking in their own language because we know that uh, in this medium, the audience will be a little more uh, patient in allowing you the liberty of telling a story, you know, through various characters that, that are not instant you know, idols or instant uh, stars that are going to pull you into the theaters. That's mm. the freedom this has offered. On casting on merit? Casting on merit, casting from across the country, which which we discovered in our first, very first outing, Family Man one. The first thing we did was, okay, we have Manoj Bajpai here. We cast from everywhere, from Kashmir to Kerala. We cast from everywhere. And there was a very liberating experience. And the first scene in the series was in Malayalam, yeah, which itself was a liberating experience. So that way... And that's something that's translated for Guns and Gulabs as well, right? In terms of just is. the quality of actors that you want to cast, not yes. really dependent on star pull. Yeah, but yeah. now I would say, mm. if we were to make a film, okay, we would probably do this. Oh, yeah. Uh, Perhaps, earlier you kind yeah. of boxed in, right? You kind of boxed yeah. in. You've been going with the system in a way, even though you, we are we were pushing it, we were doing these, you know, go go gone, three shows in the city, whatever the whatever we wanted, but. You're still kind of boxed in with the numbers and the studio and everything else, and this is the cast that they would want and all that. But I think if when we when we go back to features now, we, we will try and take all the learnings and all the yeah. excitement and the freedom we experienced in the long format into the short form. And mm. I'm, I would extend it to beyond casting as well, just the storytelling. Storytelling. We, I feel, we have also evolved as storytellers as we told in as we started you know, doing the long form mm. because I think we became better batsmen oh yeah you know so we have a better arsenal of shots now uh, or at least we'd like to think so and then all these things would fit in any format even in a one day format even in a feature film even just the way we shoot we changed dramatically from how the family man shot was shot to Farzi to uh, Guns and Gulabs and Cyrodiil there are four different looking and approach of filmmaking. So I think we're just having a great time expressing ourselves. And so I think even the audience now having watched so much content, and not just our content, I'm just saying having watched all this OTT content, I don't think I, I, we would run into a person who's saying, you know, yes, sir, I enjoyed watching this on OTT, but I wouldn't watch this in a theater. It's probably not going to happen. If yeah. they enjoyed watching it on OTT, if, if they really enjoyed watching it, they would probably be happy watching that on a big screen as well. And I think that's where uh, the whole dynamics are shifting, not just us, not just the creators, but even the audiences would be welcome. If we were to make a family man for the big screen now, I, I would like to think that people would still go and watch it. Oh, for sure. I yeah. think it's just tricky the other way around. <laughs> uh, it's not necessary that a community viewing experience have, really translates into that uh, digital viewing experience, right. sure. at least for some films. I wanted to, you know, while I was cheering for the both of you with all the success that's happening in the last three or four years in the digital space, I was hoping that you're not falling out of love with full uh, feature films. That's, no, no. That was my biggest fear. <laughs> yeah, not yeah. Absolutely not. We yeah, are feature no. filmmakers. Yeah. Yeah. We just we just fell in this and we loved it, so we explored it a bit more and we just can't wait to start our feature next year. Yeah. So, yeah. No, no, we can't wait for that as well. And uh, so I wanted to inquire about your writing process where I wanted to know whether 
um, owing to the particular environment right now, and I'm not particularly talking about the environment, uh, I'm talking about film discourse online, where it's immediate criticism or immediate screenshots that are posted about the particular show, sometimes even out of context. And sometimes I feel like creators have a lot of pressure because of just the outrage that happens online, and this is specifically for digital content. Mm. So I'm wanting to know as writers whether that censorship kicks in. All these years, as we were writing shows or features for that matter, somehow we didn't let things affect us. Either the expectations or looking microscopically at a topic and seeing how people are going to react to it. I feel like we're kind of well-balanced people and there is a certain sense of responsibility. As filmmakers, you know, you can put crap out there. I'm, not, I'm just talking about, I'm even talking about quality. Like you wouldn't care sometimes, just put up, uh, put out a, a, not a not so great quality either. So because of that balance, I don't think we are consciously doing it on a daily basis. It's there. And most of the people that watch our shows or films, I, we haven't had any flack that way. Ki you're targeting something this. And I, I think once you don't have an agenda or something you want to prove or something, you know, you're doing a film for film's sake or a film for that story, it seems to be fine. Mm -hmm. I don't think it should let it affect us. Then I, we'll be customizing and tailoring it so much. I'm talking about in all aspects, not just a topical point of view. Um, yeah. Because it starts dictating then everything, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. It's yes. And, and it's, yeah, I mean, and uh, speaking of which, see, even on even on the online plot platform now, there are so many guidelines and stuff that have come, and especially with, say, portrayal of children or how we're treating. And uh, you ha in, in any case, you'll have to work around these things. And it's something that as any, any creator, you will have to kind of work around some mm -hmm. of the restrictions, right? I mean, uh, and that's throughout the world. You just cannot show a kid smoking a cigarette because it's yeah. illegal for a kid to smoke. So stuff like that, uh, you know. You adapt. All, mm -hmm. Yeah, you, it'll always be there. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the one thing that really stuck with me w while watching the Guns and Gulabs trailer was just the gags and just how organically it was hilarious. I just seeing, anyway, seeing Raj Kumar in a hilarious, funny role, and especially written by the both of you, it always translates so well. I wanted to know, so I was watching these blooper reels of a Judd Apatow film, okay. <laughs> and it almost seemed like he was just throwing ideas at Seth Rogen, and he was just flying with each idea that he was giving uh. him. And I was wondering from a script point of view, are they just riffing right now? And what is he going to keep in that edit? So I wanted to understand from the both of you, when do you tell each other to stop when a gag's going on for too long or is probably not hitting the mark? Or you let the actors fly and then you pick in the edit? See, we uh, everything that you see on screen first is on the script, right? I mean, we okay. write the script in very detailed form. Uh, you know, we've discussed with the actor, so the actor knows what to do. Having said that, and that's when we step back and give the actors full freedom to do what they want. Of course, if it's not working, again, we'll have a little bit of a discussion and change it. But most of the time, you let the actors do what they want. And as long as it's working, it's working. If it's not working, so be it. I mean, you can always take it out in the edit. That's, uh, that's how yeah. we look at it. We already know the edit in our heads when we are shooting. Mm -hmm. So they also, they also bought into the idea that they're making a film or a show with us. So they, they are expect, they also are feeling that they should do it in a certain way than they would in another film or something for that matter. So that helps a lot because once you're in tune pretty much by end of the first day or yeah. half a day, two days max, and now they know what we look for uh, given the script. Mm -hmm. So you've sometimes, many people go off exactly what's in the script. Some people just go off it, no problem, you know, but the idea is just make it easy give them a playground to bat, um, do what they want. There is also a magic to the fact that sometimes I see your stories and there's a comedic gag which doesn't really have a relevance to the screenplay moving ahead, okay. but it's just an interaction. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, for example, uh, like I think about uh, Shareb Bhashmi and Manoj Bajpai and their recurring theme at restaurants. Huh. It's reflective of their personalities and their dynamic, <laughs> but it doesn't really have to lend to something ahead. Right? Correct. Um, so I think that's beautiful. That was just a compliment, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank uh, you. I wanted to uh, ask, uh, you know, uh, I was seeing an interview with Basan Bala and mm. he was uh, talking about Mart ko dar nahi hota. Mm. And he was talking about how 
he was probably self reflective of why the audience couldn't really go into the theater or why the marketing snippets didn't really translate into motivating them hmm. when i think about like 99 as well which is like probably one of my favorite uh, comedies from you guys like do you self reflect on that process of how it goes and translates to the audience on how to motivate them trigger them to get in we always reflect right i mean we always reflect as to what goes on what went wrong what can we do better uh aside from the filmmaking process at that point or in the first few films we didn't have the cast that would pull in let's say the audience right the stars so called stars so uh but but we always knew that once you are in you are and you will be entertained and in in a slightly fresh way so our biggest challenge was to how do you tell people that you come in and sit and i'm for i'm pretty sure you're going to tell your friend to go and watch it so 99 still kind of ended up speaking for itself because it came at a time during that strike and it came with nothing going for it no marketing uh we had exhausted all the funds by then yeah. yeah the only people who watched the film were people walking by and saying ye kya hai poster the nothing else let oh. me go watch and but, like this was this happened on friday and saturday on sunday at least some uh, the theaters that i went to were starting to get filled up like uh, the uh, friend of ours the producer of the film also called on sunday and said guys you have to come now sterling is full oh, i'm wow. like are you serious the whole theater sterling has filled up yeah. so we went there and we were surprised because there's no promotions no nothing there's just some posters here and there outside the theater and so the word of mouth caught on and because it was also a period of there were no other films it actually had the opportunity to play for a few weeks wow, and the yeah. film turned out to be watched by a lot of people who never even knew it existed <laughs> before it came but that's a luxury that only that one film got yeah. the rest of the films you better open on friday or the theaters are throwing it right out right yeah i remember yeah. because uh, i also have a particular like pet peeve about just film criticism in general and like i remember absolutely loving a gentleman mm -hmm. and then thinking about why i was getting such like uh, nasty reviews but then i was thinking that that particular thing of hitting the right release date right weekend is a science in itself which is now yeah. being figured Which, out as well yeah. um i want to know um i think one aspect of especially your stories that doesn't get enough credit is what you mentioned previously is how you're capturing those action set pieces these long shots that you're covering in these uh, sequences i want to know uh, your influences from an action standpoint like what are the directors that you really looked up to in combat sequences or something because i feel like in the hindi space at least with the crime thrillers that i've seen your uh, action set pieces stand out the most um, um uh, thank you for that because uh, we always felt felt undervalued as action <laughs> filmmakers because we had action I from we, 99 yeah, the comedy yeah, from 99 action yeah. and they just ignore it and we've always tried to do something interesting we thought you know imagine first time filmmakers doing this 99 and there's a shot of cyrus brocha running and hitting the pole and falling yeah. when the action director came they had all these shots planned you know you cut running shots and the face and then cut and a close up cut to he hits and you fall so there is like some 8 10 shots to it yeah. we wanted in one flat long wide shot and there's like how is it possible sir i said no no kar sakte hain pakka kar sakte hain let's figure a way out so it almost looks like he ran to a real pole hit and fell and we figured a trick on the spot wow. to make that work so from then on the excitement to do either a realistic chase in chandni chowk uh, later on or these kind of things which are how do you do it and we never showed off ki see how we did it mm -hmm. so slowly people picked up by the family man season 1 they started saying how did they do it yeah. there are shots where he would in the one take sequence you would you stab the guy and he goes up to the uh, wash basin and is washing his hands the camera is right behind him up to his face but you don't see the camera yeah so there are lots of things we do that are extremely invisible and functional functional whatever we, the tricks we do and they're all basic physics basic whatever common sense how we do it and the action has to be effective or hand to hand in gentleman for example i was proud that sid was fighting so well with those action guys and it's all we used elbows for the first time so we thinking there's a lot of thought in it and very precise cuts we sit with the editor make sure each punch is hit hard we even do tricks later in the edit that is so invisible so there's a lot like a of thought a right? lot of thought in it and i'm glad <laughs> somebody wrote after the season 2 or something 
one of the reviewers. One of family man, people started writing about the one, yeah. one take. One the take one and, one no, no, somebody wrote, somebody who usually doesn't like films at all. <laughs> uh, like, in, she, he or she wrote that this set standards for action Shubha. filmmaking oh, wow. in, in India. I was like, wow, <laughs> I'll take this as the biggest compliment. So. No, because I really believe that uh, yeah. when I saw the last episode of Farzi and I saw Shahid getting his hands dirty <coughs> in that long shot, mm -hmm. I was like, this is the first time it's ever happened. That he's really getting his hands dirty. You can really feel like he's getting those blows. Yeah, And yeah. that was probably only covered by you. So... I feel like Guns and Gulabs, when I saw the trailer also, I was like, we're going to get a lot of gore here as well. And there are two kinds of action we tend to do, like that gritty yeah. where Shahid was looking it, feeling it, right? You felt the stabs, you felt the bullets and all that. That and you know, you saw in the season two of Family Man with Manoj and yeah. Samantha and all these guys. Yeah. Then there is this and fun... And there is an entire chase sequence through the crowded streets of Bombay, and, uh, Western oh, yes. Express Highway. Uh, then there's the stylish yeah. ones where we've done in Gentleman, which I really think was, we did, it was really cool sequences that if the, if, you know, the, the bigger ones, the bigger action pieces, where if the car goes off, in it fast, off and, a roof. In <laughs> fast <laughs> and furious, if it flies off, they actually break through a glass, land in a party, and then nicely maneuver everywhere. I'm thinking that's not going to happen in Bombay. Yeah. <laughs> it's too crammed, you're going to yeah. get stuck between two buildings. Yeah. So, and the third one is the comedic Violence. Mm. We tend to uh, we tend to like in Go Go Gone ninety nine and now in um, Guns and Gulabs. There is a lot of humor in action. That's the other excitement for us. So there are quite a few sequences in Guns and Gulabs where you get to see that. Would I, would I be wrong if uh, this is just a parallel that I'm creating? I love your style, and when I look at Guy Ritchie films, especially the combination of comedic gags and those action set pieces, I think it's such a good semblance. It's so good. Again, another compliment again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I Thanks. wanted to uh, ask you from um, a director's standpoint, I was uh, watching a lot of these round tables with a lot of these directors and they were talking about the fear of being jaded, about how sometimes they f fear that over a period of time, probably the way their characters interact in their fictional worlds won't translate to a current demographic of like an 18 to 30 younger demographic. I don't think we consciously think like that. Mm -hmm. For example, the greatest example would be Guns and Gulabs again. Yeah. It is set in 1990 yeah. and it has no cell phones. It has a kid writing a le love letter and it has a person going to this booth that has these strange letters written on it, STD, ISD, PCO. You could argue that somebody born 20 years ago doesn't, it. doesn't even know what those words are, but I'm assuming they'll still get it. <laughs> yeah. I think they'll still get it. And the songs that we think are nostalgic uh, for, for a certain uh, age people may not be nostalgic for them. They're just mm -hmm. old songs they may or may not have heard. But I think the, the key here is I don't think we're banking on those things. Yeah. Like I'm not banking on saying here's a beautiful nostalgic film and if you get the nostalgia, you'll love it. I'm saying if you get the nostalgia, great. If you don't get the nostalgia, hopefully you'll enjoy the story or mm. the humor or everything else it has to offer. My, so that's kind of what we are yeah. hoping yeah, my for My three here. nephews watched it because mm -hmm. I have I have sp I have privileges. Yeah, it, right? it doesn't get more. It doesn't that's get a, more. That's a good core audience to get your yeah, you know, insight from. One is twenty one, one is seventeen, one is twelve. Wow. So twelve is not supposed to watch, but the guys snuck in and watched yeah. it. But uh, all three, they just so excited. They called me in video call and said, "Oh my God, Mamaya, this is the best series you made. Oh my God, so much fun." And I'm thinking, what did you guys understand? And they're like, we got everything. Oh. I'm asking questions. What is this? What is this? They, it doesn't matter is what I feel. Mm -hmm. Even if the foreigner song plays and they have no clue what it is, just the fact that it's playing in the small town milieu and you're not expecting Brian Adams to break out on a song, they were laughing out loud saying that this is working. So it didn't matter to them if they knew it or not, mm -hmm. is my point. Wow. The other point about relevance to the younger generation, we're quite current, but then I would never force in, you know, uh, a lingo mm -hmm. or something just because you want to be cool. And yeah. say, I think that's where people go wrong. That's I where agree, people go I wrong agree. when yeah. you try to... I never do that. When you're, you know, when you're not being sincere to yourself and trying to say, my characters are going to talk like those college kids... The way I think those college kids are going to talk, exactly. but 
then you should get those college kids to write your script yeah because you know <laughs> uh, i see it with a lot of like these uh, teenage romances it yeah. actually looks like an older person thought that this is how younger people yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 suddenly see suddenly hear a word like yolo and fomo yeah. and they're like looking at winking saying yeah. i just said yolo man <laughs> so stuff like that so yeah. i try to be organic and when we write the new generation i'm sure we'll just go with what works you know as a filmmaker and then let the let the actors bring in their um, their their thing Um, you know, um, same goes for regions also. Same like, goes for regions, regions also. Oh like, yes, yes, yes. This is how Tamilians behave. Oh yes. And yes. I'm like, oh, no, no, <laughs> that's not, not how Tamilians really behave. <laughs> no, there, there's a Hindi cinema has got a lot of flack for that for sure. Uh, the track record's yeah. not been that good. But I was thinking about um, your roots uh, and the fact that they're from Andhra Pradesh and um, the Telugu language and. Um, the one movie that i find really underrated is a movie that you produce called cinema bandi and uh, i wanted to know your curiosity of ever venturing into telugu cinema as directors has that ever interested you we yeah. you know when you when you madurang is telugu the first thing you think is to make a telugu film that's how we came we were in the us we came here to make a telugu film we first went there and actually sat and uh, almost I was about to were about to start on a Telugu film with a, a an actor, uh, but thankfully it took a few years to take off, because what was slowly happening was that every time the wind is changing, you were also uh, told to change, mm-hmm. and that's not just Telugu, that's just Hindi. I mean, I went through the same thing with Ninety Nine here. It took us five years to make Ninety Nine. Every time you go to a star, they love it and they change it. so i'm saying thankfully because the time that it took us to make either telugu or hindi made us think a lot as to how do we preserve this mm. and but we need a break we don't know anybody you know we just complete out, complete outsiders and we'd love to make telugu and telugu and then it got delayed then we came here then we sat here and in 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 mumbai and then we were trying to do it here same problem again everybody trying to change your story so we thought the only way to do it is to make it your own Yeah. So we even decided to start shooting shows in the city, but with our own money, saying let's just do it because there is no way we can um, adhere to what we do when you involve a star or a studio. And so Telugu would love to do. We keep going back and we keep getting having dates. Something will happen. Then we say, you know what? Let's just at least pr- start producing it so that we're at least making in the language we would love to make in. Yeah. And also, so, I think there was a little bit of a calculation initially when we were trying to do our films, knowing very well that we may not adhere to the mainstream standards. That uh, your film is only going to go to a very small portion of the audience. Let us say only ten percent of the movie-going audience, the five percent, is going to watch your film. For us, also, it made sense at that time to think if we make it in Hindi, maybe the five percent will be a little larger pool. Mm-hmm. And so, when you when you can afford to make a bigger film, when you can afford to go wider. Then you can think about it. So that that point, that's that was one of the reasons when we made Shore in the City, it had English, it had Hindi, but the idea was let it go slightly wider pool, assuming it's only going to be a very small pool. Yeah, the thought you know, process. Yeah. I would also think that never say never. Also, because uh, you know, right now I'm looking at at least the movement in Tamil cinema where um, a lot of the stars are collaborating with directors who have a very young sensibility like you know you saw rajnikanth with nelson he did jailer mm. you you're seeing kamal hasan with lokesh kanagraj and they're doing vikram i would imagine that you would be ideal to really you know uh, translate a great chiranjeevi story in a rajan dk world that would sound so amazing no I'd love to love, love to i mean to, that's man. always the fan, that's always we actually work on those mm-hmm. we actually <laughs> meet and work with the actors in in both telugu and tamil and see if we can pull off something we have met all our favorite actors and saying let's do something they're also excited just trying to find the right balance i think i think we never start a project till we are very sure about the script so and the script will dictate can we do it in telugu can we in hindi or wide or whatever it is so yeah, yeah. the bigger the star the more the responsibility also it becomes at a certain level so we have to be all of us involved should be very sure that this is the right thing to do yeah no no this is Absolutely your prime, and I really feel like oh, everyone's looking forward to Guns and Gulabs. I can't wait for it as well. Congratulations to you, thank and you. thank you so much for doing this. Thank, thank you. you, thank, thank you. you so much. Good fun. <laughs> <laughs>